Hello and welcome to the Powerful African Women podcast. The podcast will empower the power in you. I am Aïssa Tou. And I am Sarah And welcome to a new episode of our Power series, our new format. Yeah, welcome and again, we hope you like it. Feel free to give us comments, you know, tips, so just send us love as always. I okay. appreciate that so much. <laughs> I know. So, I said to how are you in Senegal? I know you're still there. At least when we're recording this podcast, you're still there. So, what's yes, up? yes. So, Senegal is good, you know, it's warmer, it's not too warm. It's nice to see the people and just for me it's a hundred percent family time so really? I'm really enjoying it. Oh yes. You need you deserve it so just enjoy. I know you told me about this new uh okay, it's not a new drink, but it's your favorite drink. You talked about it's not a tire, but you said oh. the green one. My favorite juice. Okay, so there is this juice that only exists in Senegal, it's called Ditar. So Dita. this is pure, you know, Wolof, Ditar. So it's great, really like, I think it's, it looks like, do you know Sapoti? No, I think it's also only know. in Senegal. It's like a round, it's, it's brown, round. And then when you open it, it's green. And then you mm. put it into water. You just like, I don't know, you try to get the juice out, yeah. mild it. Yeah. And then you put sugar and then you eat. But it's only in Senegal, I think, or maybe Mali. I and I love see. it. Because, yeah, you talked to me about it this morning. I was like, hmm, interesting. I've actually never heard about it. But since I love everything Senegal, so I would love this as well. Whenever you come here, uh, you definitely, I'm definitely going to make you try the dach. It's so oh, good. Okay. Let's hope it's going to be soon. But yeah. Um, okay. So today's topic, it's going to be super light and chill as always, right? Um it's gonna be a little extension of what you talked about on no it's not even like on neocolonialism but it's not even that right it's a subsection of it and it's gonna be related to change okay i'm talking about it just because obviously i'm always going through change like since yes 1990 something all that all i've been doing is changing okay so I wanted to get your insights on it first, Aisa too. So, um, how do you feel about change? Like, are you the kind of person who actively yes. likes to seek out for change, or do you like to resist it? So you're always trying to be in your comfort zone. No, I actually love change. It's just you know, since I've been growing up, I've I'm used to like moving, changing mm -hmm. countries, doing new stuff. So I love change. And I actually realized that I'm the kind of person who get bored after doing the same thing yeah. for a while. So I'm a hundred percent a change addict, which is not I a good feel, thing always, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel very similar. Like I'm the type of person I'm always looking for change and always you want it to be positive change, right? Like, and do yes. yeah, like positive changes. But I also tend to want to resist it when it's happening. To want like, to resist change? Yeah. Like it's subconscious, okay. but you have, I have a tendency to want to resist change when it's happening. Yes. You know what I you mean? You are afraid a bit. Is that... Basically. Because me, I have anxiety, uh, I have anxiety about change. I'm always yeah. going to be questioning if it's a good decision exactly. or if I should do it. But ultimately, I realized that every time I choose, I, I choose change, it's always better, which is weird. Yep. But once you get into it, yeah. Yep, exactly. So basically, usually resisting change, right? It comes from, yes. like, it comes down to one thing. It's the fear of the unknown. And that is, I don't think yes. it's only me, but I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. It's I like, you're relate. not opposed to change. You're opposed to knowing, like, to not knowing what's going to happen. Yes, exactly. Right? And, exactly. And I see myself in that a hundred percent. Yeah. Right. So and the thing is like it's not even only the negative ones like being laid off mm -hmm. or job like from your job or facing like a hard crisis. It can also be even for the most exciting things, right? Like finding a new job. Finding a new job. Coming. Moving to a different mm -hmm. country, country. Getting married yes. even, you know. 
know, like there are all those different happy events. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm just laughing. Don't I have so the weird. chance to laugh? You're so <laughs> weird. But anyways, I was saying, it's not even only the bad changes that are happening. Even the big ones can be super scary. You're yes. so cute and I hate the number that you're laughing. <laughs> you, are, you are cute right now. I'm seeing the oh smile. Anyways. <laughs> anyways, so yeah. I mean, I can relate that it can be a roller coaster of, of emotions, mm -hmm. right? Like you know, eventually you're gonna be happy, but they still that fear and anxiety of kind of leaving the norm or something unknown. Right? Okay, so I was saying, mm -hmm. you know, um, like mm -hmm. I went abroad, and it was really one of the most exciting things. Like I was looking forward to, but yeah. it was also one of the scary, the scariest things, right? Um, yes. Uh, at the same time, like, I didn't kind of want to go just because, again, I was scared of the unknown. I was scared of going to a place that, like, I've never been and then have to start all over again. So, mm -hmm. in my mind, although I was excited to go, I was also hoping that they would relocate me back to the country. And I yes, shared that, I right? Right, but yes. like I would hope they will relocate me back just so that I can actually I won't have to deal with it. Yes. Right. Uh, and stay in now, your comfort zone. Yeah. Obviously, because that's always what's like that's where you feel the most happy and safe. That's the biggest factor, mm -hmm. safe, right? But now, obviously, like I've done my time there. I enjoyed it. I loved it. Met so many different people, um, different foods, different culture. And I was able to learn a lot. So there is something comforting about the certainty of the norm, right? It is more, mm -hmm. and then something that I actually noticed, it's more logical. No, it's more emotional than logical. Because, you know what I mean? Because in your mind, it's like, you know logically, so your brain tells you that, that change is going to be necessary for you. Like, it's going to bring you so many great things. But your emotion and your heart is like, I'd rather be where I know, like, and then how things are working. Like, I'd rather be safe than actually going somewhere mm -hmm. where I don't even know what to expect. Yes. Right. So, how do we sometimes resist change? Mm -hmm. I personally... Uh, you know, the thing is, sometimes, you don't even know, right? Because sometimes, like, you think you accepted the change happening. But, again, the resistance comes very subconsciously. It can be really powerful. Yeah, like, really right? Tough. Exactly. In my case, and it's like that, real anxiety. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And, I mean, you can relate to that. I can relate to that, too. Because it always goes back to that self-sabotage thing. You yes. self-sabotage yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right, you feed mm -hmm. yourself with certain ideas of um, maybe I just don't need to go there, you know. Like, I rather be here, or like you're gonna even find reasons, like you know, my uh, for health issues, I'd rather be secure here. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you could use parents as a need, like as a reason, although they're very independent. You can use, mm -hmm. you know, different reasons just because in your mind you're not ready for change yes yeah the thing is again resistance like it's not like it's not trying to affect us or harm us it's actually trying to keep us safe right so it's also exactly, your yes. own it's a defense mechanism voila it's a defense mechanism so mm -hmm. it is like preparing us telling us that something potentially risky is about to happen and we should be ready to act and that again that's what it triggers fear from us, like for us. And then that fear makes us want to take a step back and stay in that comfort zone that just that you're happy with, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, when resistance happens, like something you have to just be mindful of is that resistance is always going to happen. Right, because as human, it, it is it's normal gonna happen, yeah. and like you said, I settle it's a safety mechanism, and mm -hmm. um, like it'd be foolish to throw that away because it's like so you don't even want your own self to like you don't 
want your body to be compassionate of you, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah, but if we hold on to that idea that we adapt eventually, then we can become more compassionate again and, you know, like not let fear or like resistance take over ourselves. So, like, thinking about actually, um, like, how that change is going to be more beneficial for you, right? How it's going to bring more happiness and how it's going to make yourself for the best. Like, it's going to re-change your perspective of it and your then be exactly more compassionate, yeah. I could even add, just remind yourself that the situation you are in today comes from you accept, accepting a previous change. Yep. So it's always going to be okay. Thank you, know? you. Thank you. Right. And again, the thing is, we are human. We are always changing. Like yes. We are always evolving. And that is something we need to be okay with. Because if we don't change, I don't know, like it's actually more scary not to be able to change, right? Like to mm-hmm. be settled for such a long period of time with a certain condition where you can seek and thrive for more. And even time yes. is changing. Again, I, I told you about the seasons are changing. Even your hair is changing because it's going gray at some point. So what makes you think that you should be changing? <laughs> Everything is you changing, know I mean? you know. Yeah, yo, <laughs> I changed over the years there. Like, my body changed. My mind changed. Everything. Like, the Everything conditions changed, you put yeah. yourself. So eventually it's going to happen. So now it's really how do you approach change, right? Or like, how mm-hmm. do you approach the resistance as well yeah so i have like four points that i just wanted to touch there's so many points that you can find but those are the ones that i felt um talked more to me spoke more to me and i hope you guys can relate if you want you can add more so one is to prepare for it because again we all know change is going to happen right it's necessary for growth so prepare for it and it can even be like you can start small like let's say you want to cut out meat that's my that's kind of my challenge for me right now i'm trying to stop okay. eating too much red meat i won't say just meat but red meat because i love lamb okay and i think i need to stop so i'm trying to do like a little detox on it and yeah like it could be small that like once you know i can eat it only once every two weeks and i you know i try to like be more accepting or add more fish add more mm-hmm. um like chicken. variety right exactly chicken yes. but also try to change even the way you see recipes because for me yes. i like lamb just because i can do more recipes with lamb so maybe try to find another variety with other mm-hmm. ingredients right so you start small like for me i'm still struggling with it but little by little i'll get there um and then again it won't make you too uncomfortable just because again it's a gradual process so yeah. the second one I wanted to talk about is mostly um like you have to determine the value if it is actually worth it, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, like for me again, I would say let's talk about um it just again going abroad, like going abroad. It's you know you have to determine the value in terms of maybe in your career growth. What is it gonna add? Um, financially, is it gonna be worth it? And you really evaluate and then look at the pros and the cons. If the pros Mm -hmm. outgrow the cons, you do it, right? Yeah. Um, And then another thing was like, think about the possibilities. Like in -hmm. terms of you have to be curious and really, again, more focusing on the advantages rather than the disadvantages. Right. Yeah. So think really about what possibilities, what opportunities you're gonna get through that change. With the diets, right? Like with my lamb, it can be like I can be a little more healthy because bread mm-hmm. meat is always associated, you know, with like blood pressure and cardiovascular yes. diseases, right? So it's also me thinking about I'm gonna be healthier on the long run. Um I don't know if I said you have maybe some changes you're thinking, yeah. I think the change, it, I, mine is more about trust yourself. Mm-hmm. Trust yourself because, I mean, because when you talk about change, there are two types of change. There are the ones that are imposed and the one that you yes. choose to do, actually. So there is 
both types. But any, in any case, what you should know is that you are able to, to, to take it. And you were able actually to make it. If you look at your life, if you look at everything you've already accomplished, all the situation you managed to actually get out of really successful, really happy and just you, you are able to adapt and you mm -hmm. are able to make it. So just trust yourself and stop looking at that moment, at that choice, at that present time. Take a most like a more widened look, like look at what you've already done. Look at everything you have already accomplished, all the changes you managed to live with. And that will help yeah. you maybe with your confidence, you know. I agree. So more about yourself, you know. I agree. Mm. And I like the fact that you said, again, like, there are different types of changes to impose and the one that you want to do for your own personal self. And yeah, in those mm -hmm. two cases, it's just important to reevaluate what, like, how it's really going to affect you and trust yourself. I started to say it, trust yes. yourself. Like, you know yourself better, but the danger of i mean yeah actually there's no danger is ever trusting yourself good no never trust yourself trust <laughs> yeah so my last point on um when there's a form of resistance happening is just to make it fun again like make it a, mm -hmm. a fun adventure right um like we always have to we always think that it can that change can be like this big and scary thing you know like a big wall and it's going to be all negative and all that but when you think about it as an adventure and um like why you're going to have to grow when you're going to learn more about yourself and when you're going to learn a lot about different people you know it's also going to be more exciting it's going to bring out the excitement i want you guys to take this with you just embrace the change that is happening in your life right mm -hmm. um because you are pushed to be really out of your comfort zone um, and like we might fight at first, but once like the change is set in, in, in set in motion, we typically just realize that we did it and we just kind of move on and it's going to be our new normal, yeah. right? So, yes. but you know what I mean? And then you realize yes. that, wow, I did it so I can do so much more. Like I have a funny story about it. Like I, I, I love water. I love, I would, no, I actually love water. Oh, I'm water. just scared of <laughs> swimming, right? Because I okay that months, kind of water <laughs> right and then one of my training like part of the training was to be submerged like in a pool in a fake helicopter and we had to be like capsized so turned upside down obviously i told you this girl has a crazy life girl i have can you imagine <laughs> it and listen this girl doesn't even know how to float so how am i gonna do this i the day of the training i literally dreamt about water like at night i dreamt about water i dreamt about me floating it was i was scared like i was stressed i was almost shitting my pants but i had to do it right and once yeah. i did it i was just like damn i'm so proud of me like literally the world is the limit best feeling i even took a picture best i feeling. promise to share it with you guys like i i, I told myself i survived like, and i really did survive because if not I'm, i don't know you know but it's really like you feel so much better and mm -hmm. you suddenly know that you can do anything you want like you have you can do amazing things right yes because of that experience um and then the last point is you really get to know who you really are mm -hmm. right because when you're going through a transition like your mind expands in a way like that it hasn't been in the past so you get to know who you really are you grow and that is, yeah. as you mean, what you always are looking for, for growth, right? So, yeah, that's just those little points that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I love it. Right? So, again, my last word is keep thriving. Don't be scared of change. Yeah. It's just going to happen every day in different forms. So, get ready and do what you got to do. I love it, Sarum. I think it's a very important topic for us as we have to face so many changes and I really yeah. like it. So thank you for this episode, Sarum. You're welcome. You're welcome. So yeah, going through always changing and all the time. Hey, you know, all the time. So it's going to be okay. It's a cleansing process. But yeah. Yes. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed.
you guys liked it and always in the meantime don't forget to bring up the power in you yes Bizu. thank Mwah. you bye bye bye